So last week we did read from Matthew chapter 3. This week the lectionary skips ahead to chapter 11. Things have changed. Last week a voice cried out in the wilderness and it was none other than John the Baptist. Wearing the clothes of a prophet, camel's hair and a leather belt, John looks the part in chapter 3. And there his message is one of repentance and turning around. Prepare the way, he says. Get ready. This is the one. This is the one we've been waiting for. Make way. Just last week, John stood boldly in the wilderness, pointing to Christ. God was about to do a new thing. This week, John's in jail, imprisoned. The news of this king, the Messiah, hasn't been warmly received by everyone. Here, John sits captive, waiting. And he just wants to know. Is that you, God? Are you the one? Now, this is John the Baptist. A prophet, yes, and more than a prophet. Even Jesus Jesus says as much this morning. John comes with credentials. And here he sits at a distance. Detained, maybe even a little dismayed. Things have changed. Are you the one or is there another? Things have changed and this rabbi from Nazareth isn't exactly setting the world on fire, at least not in the way that many had hoped. Herod is still king. Rome is still calling the shots. What sort of king is this Jesus? When's the big reveal? Are you the one, John asks? Is that you, God? And it's the kind of question that a simple yes doesn't answer. Not in today's text. Go and tell all that you hear and see, Jesus says. There's more to this story. The blind receive sight. The lame now walk. The dead live. The poor have reason to hope. Things have changed without question. For those with eyes to see and ears to hear. This Christ has come to give new life, to redeem and reclaim and restore the lost and the broken. Blessed is anyone who takes no offense at that. I don't know about you. But it's a word of grace to me, this glimpse of John the Baptist questioning. John, who is here linked to the prophecies of Isaiah. John, who is connected to 2 Kings and the prophet Elijah. John the Baptist, a prophet, yes, and and even more. John questions. John asks, is that you? Is that you, God, at work in all of this? I ask that question a lot. Maybe you ask that question too. Is that you, God, in all of this? Are you the one? 
It matters how we see. The many ways we hear, faith isn't limited to all that our senses can take in. This week, for whatever reason, that's where my mind keeps getting stuck. Be watchful, get ready, Christ is coming. For those with eyes to see and ears to hear, faith works in and through and beyond, I believe, all that our senses can take in. The eyes of faith always see farther. The ears of faith always hear a little more deeply. Jesus, the Messiah, comes in today's text as the embodiment of a divine promise fulfilled. Even before John asks his question, the answer is already there. In plain sight. If we could go back to the text, I'd show you. Verse 2. When John heard in prison what the Messiah was doing, he sent word. Verse 2. Matthew identifies Jesus as the Messiah before John even has an opportunity to question. The activity of God is named and known from the beginning. The answer is there for those with eyes to see. It matters how closely we look, how far we listen. Days of waiting and expectation are here in this season of Advent. Those days are here and it's a matter of time before John's question, which is my question and your question, finds us again. Is that you, God? Is that you at work in all of this? It's a word of grace for me to hear John ask this question. It's a gift as well to see that the answer is right there in plain sight. Jesus, the Messiah. Even before John says a word, you and I, I believe, are invited to live in the reality of Christ's coming in plain sight, right here and now. We're living it. You're living it, St. John. You're invited to watch for Christ's presence in that living. Christ with you. Christ beside you. Christ ahead of you. Even before you have to ask, We are in the midst of this season of expectation and hopefulness and watchfulness. And as Christ followers, I believe that you and I are invited to watch a little more closely. And to listen a little more deeply. For the one who comes here and now again to make all things new. Get ready. Watch and listen. Amen.